Washington Journal continues. Chris Edwards from Cato Institute joining us now for a discussion about uh, the stimulus package that uh, has been pros proposed by the president-elect. Uh, Mr. Edwards, a lot of large goals, a lot of uh, large price tags attached to these goals. From what the estimates of it, that you've heard over the last couple of days, do they kind of ring true for you or do you even expect more of a cost perhaps? Well, the, the number that's being floated around now is about $850 billion. And I think the Washington Post was right yesterday to suggest that while the Obama administration may propose something that large, it does seem to me that Congress has to think about how to pay for it. Uh, even without a stimulus package, we've already got about a trillion dollar deficit this year, an absolutely unprecedented number. So, you know, it does seem to me that some of the blue dog conservative Democrats in Congress may have real concerns about this. And so if you take what we have as far as a deficit is concerned, you factor in what potentially this could cost. What does it mean as far as our budgetary efforts, uh, especially this new administration? Well, we're in an extraordinary situation where the federal government spends about $3 trillion a year. It taxes about $2 trillion. So one-third of everything the federal government will spend this year is borrowed. That is remarkable, especially given that we've got these long-term problems with Social Security and Medicare. Uh, the deficits, unfortunately, down the road are only going to get bigger and bigger, I, I fear. Uh, and, and Americans may never see a balanced budget again like we had in the 90s for, for four years. You study taxes. Uh, ultimately, the question will have to beg, where do you pay for all this? Does that mean higher taxes? Uh, you know, uh, the, the current borrowing by the government debt uh, pushes costs onto the next generation of young taxpayers. There's no doubt about that. When the government borrows money, they're pushing costs onto people in the future. And so this is not just an economics question. There's a real ethical or moral question here. Why should we be borrowing so much to spend and consume now? Uh, because what we're, we're essentially doing is pushing costs so that people in the future have a lower standard of living. And I think that's unfair. Uh, leading into this, I read some of the, the higher points of this plan, some dealing with transportation, once energy efficiency, broadband in the United States, that kind of thing. Uh, is this something, or at least give your thoughts, at least as far as the projects are concerned, is this something that should be handled by the federal government or should the state solely have to be responsible for these things? Well, state and local spending on infrastructure is important. And if you look at the numbers, the state and local spending on things like highways tallies up to about $300 billion a year. But, but most infrastructure in the United States is provided by the private sector. Oil refineries, pipelines, all those sorts of things are about five times as big as state and local infrastructure spending, about two trillion a year. So, uh, you know, state and local infrastructure spending is important, but we also have to think about incentives to make sure the private sector uh, keeps investing in infrastructure. So you would endorse a public-private partnership kind of deal? I think there's a lot we can do, uh, the, a lot we do now uh, with state and local spending that should be in the private sector. I mean, most of your viewers are prob probably live in cities where the local and state governments have spent on sports stadiums and convention centers, those types of things. There's no doubt that that act sorts of activities should be put in the private sector, in my view. Do they get return as far as the investment is concerned? Well, that's right. Things that generate returns can be put in the private sector. I mean, things that you can charge fees for, like bridges, toll highways now, uh, anything like that where you can, can a private investor can put money in, earn uh, a return through fees. You can put those sorts of activities in the private sector. We're going to talk a little bit more uh, about the, the president-elect's plan for stimulus as far as the states is concerned. Chris Edwards, our guest, the numbers, if you want to ask him questions regarding this plan, its cost, what it does, uh, you can ask him these questions. 202-737-0001 for Republicans, 202-737-0002 for Democrats, 202-628-0205 for independents. Yesterday, the president-elect, during a press conference, addressed the issues of uh, potential costs for this plan. Here's what he had to say. Uh, I'm concerned about the numbers that are being talked about. Uh, I, uh, we're not intending to spend money lightly. Uh, you know, the, the tax burden on Americans are already high. We are going to be inheriting a deficit that is uh, probably above a trillion dollars. Uh, and so, look, I, I'm, I'm a taxpayer like everybody else, and, and I don't want to see money wasted. What has been striking in the conversations uh, that we have had with economists from the left and the right over the past several months is how 
the economic forecasts uh, have deteriorated. And the conclusion has been that with credit freezing up, with businesses laying off workers, with a continued uh, weakness in the housing market and escalating foreclosures, that unless you have a bold approach, you could see the economy continuing to decline at a pretty rapid clip. That is not, uh, not acceptable to me, uh, and I don't think it's acceptable to the American people. So uh, we don't ha the, uh, th this is not an optimal situation, uh, but what we're going to have to do is make the best decisions that we can with the hand that we're dealt. Chris Edwards, it was during that clip that you made a comment about the President-elect's remarks. Uh, President-elect Obama speaks very carefully about these issues, and that is good. It shows that he, uh, he, he thinks a lot, he listens to a lot of advisors, we understand, and hopefully he makes good decisions. I don't think that passing a big stimulus package, however, uh, is a good decision. I think that the federal government is so massively in debt already, it simply cannot afford this sort of spending. And I also think that Policymakers, frankly, they should be more humble in their ability to control and manage the economy in the short run. Uh, all those PhD economists up on Capitol Hill and in the White House, frankly, they make mistakes all the time. Uh, uh, we see with uh, Treasury Secretary Paulson, he runs this way, he runs that way. They're very smart people, but I don't think the government can really control the short-term economy. I think they ought to put their focus on long-run economic growth. I think that's where we do know a lot about what makes the economy run. I don't think we can control the short-term ups and downs. Quick sidestep. You talked about the current uh, folks that are behind uh, economics. What about the, the choices that the, the president-elect's made so far as far as background tenure and what it says about uh, economic uh, philosophy? Well, I think uh, President-elect Obama has chosen a very, uh, a, a pretty good centrist uh, cabinet uh, for, a, for a Democratic president, I think. Uh, uh, Christina Romer, I think, is a real top-notch economist. Uh, uh, so I think he's made some good choices.